What's up everyone, this is 10 Rules All, and I'm back again today with another video for you. And uh, it's going to be a voiceover commentary, and I'm going to be discussing the brand new super fucking epic spring update for Battlefield 1 that just came out. Uh, but first of all, in the, in the background here, you're going to uh, have some footage of me playing uh, Conquest on Amiens and Argon Forest, a little bit of both, using the Hellregal 1915 SMG and the Gewehr M95, respectively. Get some pretty sweet uh, collaterals also with that Gewehr, uh, so check that out as well. Uh, honestly, they should stop naming these patches by the season. Spring patch, spring update. These updates are supposed to be coming out on a monthly basis from now on. So anyway, to start, DICE has added the ability to create and maintain platoons. Everybody seems to have been asking for these, so here you go. Uh, you can invite up to 99 other people, other than yourself. And uh, you'll all share a common clan tag. Oops! I meant platoon tag. And if you happen to have more than 100 friends, and if you do, I envy you because I am so fucking lonely, then you could always just create another platoon. Uh, because the platoon tags are not exclusive. There is also a ranking system now within the platoon, which is pretty cool. Uh, all founders start out as general, which is the highest rank you can have. Everyone else starts out you know, as, as lower rank unless the founder decides to promote you. This doesn't really add a ton to the game, but it's still a cool feature to kind of help with that personalization factor, which I think this game desperately needs. So, speaking of ranks, you start out with the general at the top, and there can only be one of those. So, you can, as a general, you can choose to give the title away to someone else, so it's not like a permanent title. And uh, being a general allows you to do and control just about everything related to the platoon. You know, naming it, uh, adding people, kicking people, writing the description, creating the uh, image, the clan tag, the platoon tag. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so you have ultimate control. So the step down from general is colonel. And as a colonel, you can still do quite a bit. You just can't change the platoon name and the platoon tag. You also are no longer able to disband the platoon. So obviously, if you're a colonel, you got someone above you who's a general, you can't say, hey, you know what, I'm going to destroy this fucking platoon right now. It's not going to happen. After colonel, we have the lieutenant rank, which is the last ranking that owns the ability to actually manage the platoon. It's uh, just about the only thing you can do though is accept or reject people's applications. So people actually have to, depending on your privacy settings, have to approach you and say, hey, I want to join your platoon. Well, everyone from the lieutenant up can approve or deny those applications. And then finally, you have the private at this rank, you're just basically a grunt. You can't change anything. You can't accept applications. You can't promote anyone, etc. You just get the killing and none of that fancy killing either. Another new feature that has been added that I want to mention to you today is the Medic Revive Intent Indicator. Basically, if you are playing as a medic, you can now spot a dying teammate. So you get shot, you're down on the ground, you're out of health, you're waiting to respawn. That's what I mean by dying teammate. So when you spot your dying teammate, they are notified that there's a medic on his way. There will be a notification that pops up on screen that says medic on the way or something to that effect. And it's kind of confirmation like, yes, this person sees you, they are coming to help you. So, 
this is a pretty nice feature as it should limit the occasions when someone will respawn just as you're about to revive them as a medic and it also helps you make an informed decision as as a player if you know you're willing to maybe wait those couple extra seconds uh, for your medic to get there if you know he's on his way. Another sort of technical addition that I wanted to mention uh, is the ability to actually be a server admin. This kind of sounds funny. It seems like something that should have definitely been in the game uh, at this point. Uh, maybe from the beginning. You know how EA is. If it's in the game, it's in the game, blah blah blah. Well, it's not in this game until now. You can now give others admin rights if you so choose. You can lower the number of players required to start a new round. So, you know, at the beginning, how I could say you're waiting for 18 players to say that they are ready. Now you can change that figure. I believe you can make it as low as 6 or as high as 20. Um, and they have finally added the function of password protected servers. Again, kind of obvious. Seems like that should have been a feature. But whatever. We have it now. We're good. And this is also an area where DICE is promising a lot of future updates. So stay tuned for those. So for some more exciting stuff, they've actually added four new guns. They are the Martini Henry Sniper, the Huat Automatic Optical, the Self Slider 1906 Sniper, and the Hellrigal 1915 Defensive. This amounts to one new weapon variant for each class. <laughs> Not groundbreaking, but it's still a welcome addition. These aren't new guns, so to speak. You know, they're just little little variants. Uh, you'll also be getting some new ribbons, new dog tags, and uh, some typical bug and glitch fixes. And those are things you can read uh, into a little bit more in the patch notes, which I'll post a link to that in the description if you so choose to uh, go through those. I'm not going to absolutely detail every single little change that has been made, because there is quite a bit. There is also an update to the netcode. I know a lot of people say that the netcode in Battlefield 1 is pretty solid, and if you compare it to Battlefield 4 and Battlefield Hardline's netcode, you would be correct in making that statement. But Battlefield 1 is not without its flaws, and they have now made it so that those playing with a higher ping no longer have an advantage. That's right. People with shitty internet no longer have an advantage over those with good internet connections. Blows my fucking mind. This will force people with higher ping to sort of lead their targets a little bit more during a firefight. So, hooray for that. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, as someone who played a lot of the older Call of Duty games, this was a serious problem. You would constantly lose gunfights to someone who is using a fucking dial-up connection, or who, who is using their 3G mobile data connection as a hotspot so they can play in their goddamn Xbox 360 with a wireless router. No. No more. Oh, and now you have the ability to vote for maps after the round is over. Yay. However, last but absolutely positively not least, is that there is an update to the grenades. They have adjusted the grenade re resupply timers in a big way. They will no longer auto resupply. You will have to be near an ammo box to replenish your grenades just like before. The difference now is that you still have to wait I believe 49 seconds after you have thrown your grenade. So if you wait 49 seconds you are not near an ammo box. As soon as you walk up to an ammo box you'll get your grenade back. If you walk up to an ammo box before those 49 seconds are up you will not get your grenades back. Hope that makes sense. 
I think that is a great, great fix. Grenade spam is damn near game breaking. There was one instance I can recall during a live stream maybe a few weeks back. I was one of, of course, the only people on my team playing the objective. I go to take this flag and I get a frag grenade, an incendiary grenade, two gas grenades, and a light tank grenade basically dropped into my pants. And I'm pretty sure my guy turned into dust if he's lucky. So grenades are a problem. This should help. Uh, they've also um, come out and said that they will be increasing the handle time for grenades. This one's a little bit more subtle. So basically, you can't throw a grenade in an instant. It'll take you a few seconds. This will make it less likely for people to just kind of throw them in a panic when they see someone kind of come around the corner at them and then you get an easy kill. You know, it, it takes your character a few seconds to kind of go through that grenade throwing animation. The grenade spam is most certainly what is holding this game back from greatness. And it's honestly exciting to me that they're addressing this issue and we're starting to see some positive change. And that's kind of been my mantra with this game. I have been patient with it, sometimes not so patient. There have been instances where I want to throw this disc across the room like a frisbee, but I'm very happy to see that DICE is sort of rewarding our patience. They are listening to us as a community. They are making these changes. And the game is certainly, certainly a better product now than when it came out last year. So with that, I'm going to end this commentary. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, give me a thumbs up on the video. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment. Tell me something you liked. Tell me something you didn't like about the video even. I hope there's nothing, but if there is, please say so. And uh, I, also, let me know what you think about Battlefield 1 so far, especially compared to uh, the game when it first came out. And uh, also, if you're feeling a little feisty, you can go over to Twitch and follow me over there. Uh, I tend to stream a few days a week, at least. And uh, yeah, you can see me fuck around in some Battlefield and all kinds of other shit. So you can follow me over there at twitch.tv forward slash 10 rules all. And again, want to mention, patch notes are in the description. So with that, I'm going to leave you. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.